Agrawal, I am an ethical hacker and I am leading the security testing team here at QA Infotech. My topic for today's presentation is ethical hacking made easy. But what if I tell you it's not? Well, having spent four years in this industry, I have often wondered why not many people take up ethical hacking as a career? Well, the reasons could be diverse and many, but from what I understand is, testers in general, they they might think that they do not have the enough expertise to venture into the space. But if I ask the same testers to hack into someone else's Facebook account to read their messages, or to hack into their bank account for stealing money, or to hack into an e-commerce website for that matter to buy something at a cheaper rate, I'm sure the mere thought of it will sound interesting to them. Well, ethical hacking is a difficult process, I understand that, but it certainly can be made easier with a variety of tools which are available out there. And these tools are used across the information security industry, developed by various hacking groups across the globe. But before I dive into the specifics, which is exactly what my presentation will focus on, the tools, the tools that uh, pander to the audiences interested in web application security and network application security, I'd like to stare away a little for you to understand how hacking has been giving sleepless nights to millions of people across the globe. Well, internet was developed back in 1970s without a serious thought for security, which is why we are in a mess today with almost daily stories about massive hacks. If you take a closer look at the slide here, some of the motivations behind these attacks are cyber crimes, hacktivism, espionage, cyber warfare, where people are breaking into computer and network systems to access illicit information that is typically held by a government or any other organization alike, and also to, uh, to hack, also to promote socially or politically motivated purposes. And it is not just one industry which is affected. Well, hacking has spread its wing across various verticals, across all the verticals, whether it's banking, finance, telecom, IT. Well, internet has become a hot market and it qualifies as a hot market simply because of its reach, its ubiquity and its influence on our life. Well, there was a news that broke out which said that cyber crimes have become more profitable than the drug trade. Well, now you can comprehend the scale at which these attacks are planned and executed. Well, the big question is what can be done? Well, hacking, we have been fighting hacking for all these years now. Well, the answer to that question is ethical hacking, which is two things, it's for a good cause and you have the consent to exploit their application in order to protect their application. Well, I think it is the right time to introduce the tools. Well, uh, there's a saying from Abraham Lincoln that if I had eight hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend the first six of them sharpening my axe. Well, it is a constant reminder to me that picking up the right set of tools is imperative for success, which is why I have come up with a list of two tools, mainly the first tool deals with the security problems that you can come across in a web application, and the second will pander to the audiences interested in network and external penetration testing on the network level. Well, the first tool, Burp Suit. Well, it is an integrated platform for performing security testing of web applications. When this tool came into existence, it, it was initially used just as a proxy for interception of your request, your HTTP, HTTPS request. But now, it has grown into a, a fully, a completely, a web application penetration assessment and scanning tool. Well, it's a, it's a simple Java application which can be easily installed on your machines. And with just one simple configuration where you need to map the port of, uh, with your uh, tool and your browser, you can easily start intercepting your request responses and study for the vulnerabilities that are being transferred in the, in the, in the traffic. Well, here is the interface of the tool. What you, say, what you see here is a list of vulnerabilities that I scanned uh, using this tool. SQL injection, cross-site scripting, and many such other vulnerabilities. Also, all the tabs that you see at the top, these are nothing but the functionality, the other functionalities that this tool has to offer. So if I begin with from intercepting your request to modifying it on the fly, from brute forcing your logins, to, uh, to finding a, a pattern in your sessions for session hijacking and similar attacks, you can pretty much, uh, you can pretty much do anything with this tool. So uh, uh, I've already discussed about proxies, spiders, scanners. For that matter, we have repeaters, sequencers to automate our several requests. So sometimes when we are trying to brute force a password or we are trying to study the request or we are sending the request again, 
because it's not it's not just one request which fetches the response or the, the, the browser, the page that is being rendered on your browser, it's not just one simple request. Multiple requests are being sent and you have to study each and every request. Well, what if the vulnerabilities are existing on those, in, 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 on those requests? Also, as I said, that we have decoders comparer for transformation of bits, for transformation of bits of application to find interesting vulnerabilities or the weaknesses in your system. Now I think it's time to take a look at the demo where I would demonstrate a simple login page. Now as you can see here, it may look like a normal login page. Well as you can see here, it may look like a normal login page to you. And for obviously for you to get inside this application, you require the correct login credentials, otherwise you won't be able to log in or to access this application further. But what if I tell you, ethical hackers like us, we don't need it. So after scanning this application, I found that this application was vulnerable to SQL injection. Now what that means is, I need certain scripts for me to enter in the fields in, in place of username passwords. As you can see here, I, I, I entered random keystrokes. And the message obviously that it was expected, it would say your login failed because this username does not exist. But now with the help of this tool, I'll try and execute a script and you would see what happens next. So what is happening here is, I have now put my intercept on. Now I am again processing the same random keystrokes here. But as you can see here, user ID and password column. Now I'll try and eradicate it and I'll enter my script which would allow me to bypass that login screen. Well, the reason why most of you might not be able to view it properly is because it's only for obvious security concerns. I don't want you to try these attacks on the applications which are publicly available, right? So as you can see here, it is the admin user account. Now I don't even need to explain what an admin account or accessing an admin account can do to your application, the amount of damage it can bring to your application. Also it is just one example. There are there are several vulnerabilities which can be easily exploited using this tool alone. Well, uh, I, I'd like to share my experience with you. So with this tool alone, I was able to hack into an e-commerce website and, uh, and that, uh, I would not like to name the organization, but that organization is based out of Mumbai and they deals in cosmetic products. And I was able to purchase a product worth rupees 1000 for 10. 10 years because I wanted to pay something at least. I got a call from them. Uh, I got a call from them saying that your order has been dispatched. Your order has been dispatched, and you're supposed to pay rupees ten uh, on delivery. So this is what this tool can do for you. But again, I'd like to bring in this warning that you don't have to try these attacks on the applications that are publicly available. You might find yourself on the other side of the law, and I'm sure you don't want to do that uh, right now uh, at this stage of your career, right? Well, another tool, as I said, th this panders to the need of the audiences interested in network level or the network penetration testing, as we say. It is one cracker of a tool. Well, this tool was developed with the intention of breaking the application. Now, since as ethical hacking and hacking, it's, it, there's a very fine line between these two terms. Where hacking is being done to exploit the application, ethical hacking, in the other hand, it, it works on the same process, it uses the same techniques, but now you're trying to help the organizations out before an adversary gets into your application. It's an open source penetration testing tool and also it comes in two flavors. The, this is the free version of the tool and also it has started coming in, in a pro version where you can scan your applications, you can also plant attacks such as phishing. Now the beauty of this tool is that it contains more than 2000 exploits and 500 payloads for you to play around. Some of the other features that this tool offer are that you can perform standard baseline audits from your uh, port scanning, your OS fingerprinting to network segmentation testing, from packet sniffing, from uh, getting a shell access to the complete host takeover. You can pretty much do anything and everything with this tool. As I said, it is a powerful tool. Also, it will grant you full access to an internal network and example of a, a similar example of which you will see in my next demo where I will try and uh, hack into a Windows 10 machine using a Linux machine. 
it ex it also executes the pro version of this tool also executes testing for all os top 10 vulnerabilities and as i just mentioned it will also take care of your uh, phishing management needs so this is the console the msf the metasploit framework console now what will happen here is I will try to hack into a Windows 10 machine using a Linux machine but this process was not easy. As you can see here, I would first like to scan the open ports and this can be, as you can see here, for you to get into a system, if I say that you have to get inside this hall, you need to access this door, right? For me to access an application or to access a machine, I need that port open. And that can be done using Nmap. Well, Nmap again is a powerful tool and it's a standalone tool also, but it comes pre-packaged in this framework. With the help of Nmap, I found that my port 139 and 445 are open. Now this could lead me, this could possibly lead me to hack into Windows 10 machine. I'm not even, I'm, I'm not sure now, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure at the moment whether it would lead me or not, but now I will try and ex I will now try and exploit it using the Metasploit framework to its full potential. And the exploit that I the exploit that I would be using here is the multi handler, which would now in a way allow me. And the payload it will be using is Metapreter. And if by the end of this activity I see Metapreter session open, I would be able to receive the shell access of the machine. Now we'll see whether it happens or not. Yeah, we're using multi-handler. Now we are setting the payload as I talked about, which is the metapreter. Now it would give me the reverse shell of the machine where you can do, uh, where you can uh, send trojans, you can send malwares, you can, uh, you can let the victim execute a script without even knowing him. Now we are setting a local port, a local host, which is the 443 and my, my machine's IP. Now we would again set the remote port, which is the 445 open port and the remote host, the victim's IP. It has started the reverse TCP handler. As you can see here, the metapreter session one is open and here is the information of the victim's machine. It is a Windows 10 machine and here is the, now by, after running netstat command, I would see all the processes that are running in that system. Well, this is just one example and the possibilities that you can achieve using this tool and it, it provides endless, limitless capabilities. Well, since now you have gained some understanding of how these tools work, I think it is the right time for me to introduce some don'ts and disclaimers. As I said, I don't want you to be caught and, you know, go behind the bars. Well, never use automated scanners on sites you don't have prior permission from. Well, ethical hacking as I said, it's for good. You have the consent, you have the permission to work on an application. But if you try your hands on Google or Facebook, they, they, they would uh, catch you, I'm sure. And without even you knowing, I mean, you would find yourself in trouble and never ever do that. Never use hacking techniques for fun. As I said, that I was, I was pretty desperate to find, a, to find a new job. This is the reason why I hacked into, them, hacked into that Mumbai-based website. But you should not. Well, there are bug bounty programs available. If you really want to test your capabilities, there is a platform for you. There is a particular protocol that you need to follow to report those vulnerabilities. What you learned during your work is extremely sensitive. Do not openly share it. This information is not something, or the techniques that you learn in ethical hacking is not something that you discuss with your friends or your family members, right? Ensure you comply with all your organization's governance and local laws. Now this brings me to my last slide, which is the key takeaways. Well, we have been fighting hacking ever since the inception of internet and we'll continue to do so until we have some secure protection mechanism in place. Well, as I said, hacking is a bane, ethical hacking is a boon. Why? Because hacking is done to exploit the application, to break the application. It is, uh, the application is approached with a malicious intent. While hacking, on the other hand, you're trying to help that organization, you're trying to help them build a, a security environment, you're trying to help them in tightening the security posture of the application or networks alike. Always take precautions to harden the application. 
Now I understand ethical hacking is not easy and it's not something that you can learn in a day. But you want to start somewhere. Start with one tool, the tool that I demonstrated, bur burp suit. And I'm sure you, I'm sure you will be able to provide value add to your clients by by providing a minimal vulnerabilities that may be existing. And we have the team that I have worked with here and the client projects that we have worked on. There are so many vulnerabilities that we can easily report to them. Also, make sure that you're watchful of the don'ts, as I have repeatedly uh, said that I I don't want you I don't want you guys to get into trouble, right? I'd like to end my presentation by saying that absorb what is important, discard what is not, and add what is uniquely yours. And I'm sure you'd be able to find a, a, a difference in the tester you were and the tester you would become. Thank you. Thank you, Akshay. That was really an informative.